please refrain from levity in the courtroom, the Chief Justice of Fontaine says, while holding a trial in an opera house for the entertainment of the audience. So in that case, how does it feel treating the law as something sacred while working for a system that views it as nothing but a drama? Is the rule of law really the highest value to uphold? And how should one approach concerns of legal philosophy? What is the true meaning of justice? And how does one truly promote it? These are some questions the Udex might ponder on, or even if they don't, then at least these are questions that many of us probably have in mind, which are things that Chief Justice Nouvellet can answer for us as we go through the Archon quest by serving as both a good example for how justice is meant to be carried out, while also showing us what miscarriages of justice look like and how we should aspire to critique these. Of course, all of these will be things that we will find out about in the Archon Quest next week, so speculating on this as late as now is rather pointless. So my point is not necessarily to guess what will transpire in the events of the storyline, but to help you keep your eyes peeled for what to look out for, and to prepare you for dealing with this incredibly austere but also prudent head of the judicial system, and also to allow me to gush about probably one of my upcoming favorite Fontaine characters before they arrive. But before that, if you think you find these kinds of content interesting, why not go ahead and leave a like and subscribe to this channel to catch more of my future videos. You can also check out my previous video on Fontaine's Law if you're interested in more systemic context for this preliminary character analysis. And yes, I will put a trigger warning for a brief mention in SA in this video. Without further ado, let's get into it. If you think about it closely, each Archon quest has a common theme, involving the traveler being the catalyst of political change in each new nation they visit, going against the establishment with the help of rebellious factions, thus forcing the system to change significantly. This seems to be the case too in Fontaine, where the justice system is being framed as our greatest enemy based on the 4.0 patch trailer. Thus, the most powerful figure in this system is likely set up to be our antagonist with their menacing gaze in the patch artwork. This is further evidenced by some remarks we hear from the trailer such as, and I quote, Your so-called justice, your beloved drama, while turning a blind eye to the suffering of the people, as well as, in your eyes, the value of a human life is nothing compared to those cold laws you hold so dear. These comments may or may not necessarily be directed towards Chief Justice Nouvellet himself, but these two feel like things he should hear, and it does paint him in a bad light if you consider how many ills of the justice system he might condone or be complicit in. However, I would like for you to consider that an antagonist is not necessarily evil, as the term antagonist describes the person relative to the side of the protagonist, meaning that they are on opposite sides, but it doesn't necessarily mean that the person's sense of morality is flawed all the time. It could simply point towards different belief systems or different circumstances. Yes, I know, I know, I sound like I'm defending a character I haven't met yet simply because they have luscious long hair and a sharp gaze framed by the most beautiful jet black eyeliner, a gaze that peers deep into my soul. Okay, yes, maybe I am guilty. But my main objective is not necessarily to defend this figure, but to explore the possible inner workings within the mind of a person who is trapped by their sense of duty and likely needs to confront the ideals they've upheld for the longest time. Basically, what is this kind of person's thought process? So I'm going to delve into that while also trying to put in a good word for this long-haired beauty. With that, we can sense that the long-haired angel in question is Chief Justice Nouvellet, who possesses a clear character flaw. But contrary to what some people might believe, well, I don't know if they think this, but just in case, Corruption doesn't seem to be the problem with this hypnotic siren. That feels too simplistic and not thematically consistent. 
Instead, this gorgeous eudex, which has been described as just and solemn, is likely a stickler for the rule of law, drawing the ire of some resistance forces for reasons invoked by some of the voices in the trailer, such as lacking empathy for humans. But the question is why maintain such an egregious character flaw then? Why not just decide to leave that narrow approach to the law behind right away? Well, my proposed answer is that currently, this seems to be the best alternative. What do I mean by that? So my guess is that Chief Justice Nouvellet probably believes that conforming to the law very strictly is the only way to be truly fair since he might see the dangers in having certain biases and perceives the law as an abstract thing which should hold power over everyone because if he tries to push forth his own ideas, it might be self-serving or undermines the integrity of his position. Because as I mentioned in my previous video on Fontaine's Law, Nouvellet holds a lot of power if you think about it. But instead of being forceful with his opinions, his words sound very polite, meticulous, and carefully constructed in order to come across as fair. Even when he wanted to diss Fosalor in his introduction of Nahida, he trailed off very quickly and even when Tartaglia seemed to call Fontaine's justice system a joke, he only scoffed without really saying anything, at least in the trailer. While this can seem like him just being careful with his words, it might indicate that he's also wary of actualizing his own opinions too much in an attempt to probably correct some of his beliefs, which he thinks might be signs of bias. Something that might lead to grave power imbalance. This is not to say, however, that this ethereal chief justice is the type to interpret the law literally rather than according to the spirit of the law or the intention behind it. I'd like to think he does at least have enough sensibility to judge based on intention rather than technicalities and he could possibly have some progressive stances when it comes to judging occasionally, especially if citing constitutionality or things like that. However, there is only a limited degree to which you can possibly twist what is stated in the law to suit your own beliefs. Like for example, if the case is for sedition and the people are rebelling for a good reason. Well, as valid as those reasons may be, it doesn't seem to be a workaround to avoid sedition charges. So this utterly captivating and swoon-worthy judge might believe in the cause of those people but can't just give them a pass because he so happens to side with them. So it's possible for him to probably still give harsh sentences to people he empathizes with and that can be very burdensome and soul-crushing to an extent, but he probably thinks doing that is better than calling the shots himself because that could be viewed as an abuse of authority. That's just an example by the way, it's not necessarily what will happen in the Archon quest. Aside from legal interpretation, there's also the issue of the legal procedure itself as in whether to hold trials in the opera Epicles and using the energy system, things like that. These are processes that he may or may not agree with and are likely harmful for greater society, but he can't find himself to abolish these because there might also be grave consequences like if this dashing and stunning eudex decides to stop holding trials in public, it might undermine the perceived transparency in the court's proceedings, and if he stops using the energy system, it might lead to an economic breakdown due to the lack of power to fuel production, transportation, etc. These circumstances don't necessarily absolve Chief Justice Nouvellet from his supposed character flaws, but they do help explain his possible current stance and how tough it is to balance morals and rules. This might be the reason why he reminds Furina to refrain from levity in the courtroom because he can't really get rid of the inherent drama and entertainment that comes with the trial process in Fontaine, but all he can really do right now is to regulate it as much as possible. One good thing about this heart-stopping Udex though is that so far his attitude doesn't seem very punitive, like he doesn't sound particularly mad at criminals or express lots of disdain for them so far, and is leaning towards being more level-headed despite coming across as intimidating as well due to his stature. I think that's a good sign as it means that he's at least unlikely to treat criminals like they're bugs meant to be trampled on. 
I guess. But we'll have to wait and see for confirmation on that. However, despite all that, you can't really blame the oppressed public from viewing Chief Justice Nouvellet's actions as a sign of apathy because there is also this line of thought that not calling out what's wrong in the system means you're part of the problem, and for very good reason. He is powerful after all and could choose to change some things, but is not properly catering to the people's needs as he should be and that could seem like a betrayal in the eyes of the general populace. Although I wonder if part of it stems from the fact that a judge functions differently from a legislator or head of state, so getting feedback from the public might not be mainly part of his job description, but no one else is there to heed them but him, basically. I don't know, Fontaine seems very weird. But anyway, when it comes to miscarriages of justice, I think there's lots of nuance to it, but allow me to simplify it by presenting two kinds of such judicial errors. Basically, there's the kind where you penalize a defendant too much, and another in which you let a defendant off too lightly. Sometimes it has something to do with how the law itself is written, like the degree of punishment specified for each law can include discrepancies, with some crimes being disproportionately penalized compared to others. Sometimes it can also be a case of crimes which are difficult to prove in a typical way, such as with SA. It's difficult to obtain the relevant proof since usually only the plaintiff and the defendant are alone at a given time. It can also be that bribery has resulted in fake testimonies or fabricated evidence to the point that even a just judge would be misled by these. There are also many other factors which I haven't included here, but these are just the ones I've thought of. Thus, with these considerations in mind, Chief Justice Nouvellet does have to broaden his perspective when it comes to the correction of these errors, and although I think he tries to avoid these in the first place, it can be very difficult if there are no other voices to rely on, such as independent committees or other justices. Until then, being labeled as insensitive is a risk that he will take in order to be someone who he believes is fit to carry out the law as it is intended. In fact, I think moral ambiguity is just kinda inherent to his job as it is inherent to becoming a lawyer. It's probably even worse if you're a lawyer, like if you're a prosecutor, you have to forcibly find people guilty even if you might start to have doubts about it. And if you're a defense attorney, you might have to defend literally the shittiest, most vile person alive because, you know, they do have the right to an attorney. When it comes to being a judge, I think there's also this idea that you're not actually God who gets to judge people's morality, but you're just someone who has to enforce the rules. This might be a painful realization if your aim is to be in the right all the time. But at the end of the day, a judge is really just an instrument sometimes and isn't meant to deal with what's right or wrong but simply what is legal or illegal. Of course, legal codes are often based on moral codes, but they don't correspond one for one so that can be tricky. This is a fact that Chief Justice Nouvellet has likely accepted and he probably knows that attempting to achieve righteousness all the damn time is both naive and arrogant. However, this will likely not be the end of his story because our conquests are meant to stage some level of character development. Hence, we as the Traveler might help him find a way to sort of ease his burdens because this character flaw of extreme impartiality and adherence to the law doesn't only affect others but likely also Chief Justice Nouvellet's own sense of integrity. So if there is a way to liberate him from the icky feeling of always having to make disappointing choices, I think he might appreciate that. So with all that said, what is our final verdict when it comes to Chief Justice Nouvellet? Well, first of all, we can't really make that judgment yet, considering we haven't really met him, but at the end of the day, character interpretation is far from being like the justice system. Our opinion on people can be confusing and messy and not set in stone, and I'm hoping that this is how many of us will feel when we finally get to meet this captivating eudex sent by the heavens above. It'll be interesting to juggle condemning his actions while also understanding exactly where he's coming from. And it'll be even more amusing to sit back and imagine what it would feel like to be in his gold-plated high-heeled shoes 
because we can't always expect ourselves to make the completely ethical decision once faced with moral dilemmas. And hopefully Chief Justice Nouvellet will allow us to explore that side of reality and ourselves. So after all my chatter, I hope you've gained an interest in Chief Justice Nouvellet, what he represents and what we can learn from him. If you like this little analysis of mine, I hope you can support this channel by subscribing to me. If you're interested in other Fontaine think pieces, I've made some already so I hope you guys could check those out if you're interested and I will continue to make more in the future. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll catch you in the next one after 4.0 comes out.